So welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm so excited to have with me Ray Zagato, who is the founder, CEO, I think he said the, the chief dishwasher. He does everything over at Lennar International. Uh, so I'll let him tell you more about that. And he's also the co-host of a wonderful podcast, one I listen to. It's called Manufacturing Out Loud. Uh, he has a wonderful co-host. They do a lot of, uh, have a lot of great guests. They talk about manufacturing and they're making us all better. So welcome, Ray. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Oh, man, it's excited to have you, man. So it's been looking forward to working with you for sure. Cool. Likewise. Likewise. We, we love to start these conversations, Ray, just by letting our listeners know a little bit about you, you know, to the journey that to where you're at right now, man. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep it short, but uh, my uh, my journey into manufacturing, I guess, part of it was growing up uh, in the 60s. You know, it was a time when uh, when folks didn't have, uh, you know, man caves or whatever. Right. My dad had a shop okay. uh, and, and my uncles had a shop or they had a bunch of stuff in the garage or whatever. So I kind of grew up and got interested around that stuff and um, got a got a the bug for the manufacturing side uh, occurred like a lot of things did in, in college or around a keg of beer. I happened to be talking to a guy that owned a uh, an injection molding company and uh, we were bonding over stuff like that. And I, I got my first job out of school working there and uh, kind of never looked back. <laughs> so had the, the great good fortune to work in a lot of different organizations, usually, uh, you know, tool and die type stuff. Okay. Uh, we did metal stamping, plastic molding, things like that. And just had a phenomenal run. Got to work with awesome people, have great customers, visit places all over the world. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome ride. And I, I got to Lenara International, founded that about three years ago because I saw that, you know what, if I'm out on my own, uh, I can share a lot more about what I've learned yeah. uh, and and more often than not, what how to avoid some things yeah. with more companies uh, than if I stay within the four walls of one organization. Okay. So here I am. <laughs> I hear you, man. So, so where are you from originally? You know, I've been based, uh, I'm bo- born in the Chicago area. I was okay. born in Brookfield, Illinois, by the zoo. <laughs> so okay. not in the zoo, uh, but uh, by the zoo. But I've, uh, I'm a Midwestern guy, lived in uh, the Chicago area my whole life. I've had the opportunity uh, through my through my work to be able to live and work in, in Singapore, in China, in Malaysia, in Mexico. I've uh, okay. traveled, I think at last count, about 30 some countries uh, around the world. So wow. um Got to see and do a lot. That is really cool, man. So, how about your from a school sample? Where did you go to school at, in that area? Uh, I did actually. Uh, I attended Western Illinois University in Macomb, Illinois. Okay. Go Leathernecks. Okay, <laughs> I, uh, go Leathernecks. I, had, I attended College of DuPage after I had I had graduated because they had a plastics technology program. Uh-huh. That that seemed really interesting, and the the guy I was working for, same one I met around the keg of beer, he told me about it and said, "Listen." You, you didn't study engineering in school. I was a business major. Uh, so he said, why don't you go, you know, learn some of the vocabulary and stuff. So yeah. I went and did that. And then, you know, along the way, uh, I wound up picking up, uh, I got an MBA in, uh, in uh, leadership and change management uh, from North Central College. So I accumulated all the paperwork. You know, it's kind of funny today, back when accumulating paperwork meant something. Right, right. Today, it's, it's kind of more what you know how to do. Yeah, you know, no it's, doubt. It's a different world. Absolutely. So how about for our listeners for that want to check out Manufacturing Out Loud, how long have you been doing that? That, uh, we started MFG Out Loud March 17th uh, of uh, 2020. So that's uh, St. Patrick's Day, number one. Uh, and number two, it was, you know, kind of the start of the COVID thing. But yeah. uh, that was the genesis of, you know, Allison DeFord and I had, had uh, met each other on LinkedIn and just kind of bonded over manufacturing and yeah. where it is and where it could be. And we used to have, we were having weekly conversations with each other, just kind of getting each other fired up about, about where things could be. And finally, one day Allison said, uh, why don't we do a podcast? And I was like, I don't know how to do that. And she goes, great. When are we going to start? <laughs> so, so we just did, man. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love her. I love her. Go get her attitude, man. That's How awesome. About it. How about it. <laughs> so speaking about industry and the challenges, which, which the things that you and Allison are addressing, what are, what do you see as some of the greatest challenges for industry? Because I mean, I know the landscape's changing fast. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's changing. Part of it is overcoming perceptions. Okay. 
you know, among manufacturers, because, you know, everything has changed so fast. So um, there's the, the good news that's out there is there's never been a David and Goliath moment in manufacturing like there is right now, because technology and the, the cost of technology, the access to markets and everything else is at a point now where if you're a a solo entrepreneur, if you're a small manufacturer, midsize, you have access to basically the same tools and functionality that the really big kids do. Right. So right. the notion of I'm not big enough or, you know, I can't go out and do these things because I'm just a small fill in the blank yeah. is wrong. Right, you know, right. and number one, the, the other myth is uh, that we see all the time is kind of around social media. Okay. It's like, oh, that's that's for kids, you know. That's uh, that's for influencers. You know, that has nothing to do with manufacturing. It has everything to do with manufacturing, and here's why: there is a conversation happening on social media right now about topics that you have expertise in, mm -hmm. that your business is uniquely positioned uh, to respond to, and if you're not online contributing to that conversation. It's happening anyway, and somebody else is getting the attention. No doubt. Okay? So that is a channel where you need to be yeah. in the right proportion, in the right way, as part of an overall strategy for companies. So, right. so that's a challenge. Yeah. And, and again, just getting over the notion that uh, technology is the purview of the big guys. You know, it's, it's not. Get comfortable asking questions about it uh, and, ask, and ask more than one person. Yeah. Um, best of all, ask somebody that's actually using it and doing it. Yeah, um, right. So th th those are some of the things we see. Man, that, that, that's no doubt. I mean, and from a social standpoint, from a social media standpoint, you, you're active. You're out there. You, you put you publish great content. I can definitely tell you have a heart for helping manufacturers. So uh, if you're out appreciate there and you're listening, you know, follow Ray and what he does because it's a lot of good information. I oh, appreciate that, man. Likewise, <laughs> back at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Following you and your company and uh, Ask Why team, uh, I'm digging it. I'm learning every day. Well, thanks, man. We really appreciate that. And, and we're trying to, with the Ask Why, just inspire people and, and yeah. get them into manufacturing, get them into industry or engineering or, or our business of supporting uh, manufacturing. So right. any advice you'd have out there? I mean, you have a ton of experience working with manufacturers just for people that may be new to industry. Oh man, um, you know I'm uh, I'm working on a project right now with a community college that is uh, preparing to. Uh, they're going for a an advanced training academy that oh. they want to put in place. Cool. And the biggest challenge that's that's out there, that we, and we all see the statistics. There's there's a shortage in the not too distant future, millions of jobs, you know, in manufacturing, and and the biggest challenge that's out there that I hear time and time again is the pipeline. Yep. is getting people through the pipeline and it's it's okay. not at the the training side where you know we're beginning to build up the resources to be able to train at scale the problem is earlier and earlier not even at the high school level i'm talking you got to get down to the grade school level and you got to engage with parents right you know not many parents today look down at their newborn baby and wish them a career in manufacturing right you know right, it's right. it's it's like they, because they don't know they're mm -hmm. Uh, their perspective on it is based on old information. Right. Um, yeah. They think that it's dirty. It's not. They think it's dangerous. It's not. Mm -hmm. They think there's no room for creativity or growth. Not true. Right. Um, they think it doesn't pay well. It pays great. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's there's there's a lot of those types of perceptions that need to get knocked out of the way. And if man, if anything, if if the the last chapters I have to write in my career can do anything. It's to help build some enthusiasm for manufacturing and and bring some new folks in, uh, yes. so that they can have a shot at the career I had. No doubt, yeah. man. No doubt. You know, Ray, that that sounds really cool about the the what you say the advanced training academy you're working with and yeah. developing. Because yeah. we we heard we did a whole series uh, to work for, with the uh, the academy of advanced manufacturing with Rockwell, mm -hmm. and. I think you just re basically said word for word what we're hearing, and that's workforce attrition. People are they're they're going out faster than they're coming in. And we're trying yeah. to attract them. Curious, yeah. what type of what type of work are you look are you doing there with the with the group you're working with? Well, you know, it's a it's a vocational school to start with. Okay. So what they're looking at is kind of the the what's next. Okay. And and what's interesting what they're what they're really seeing is that 
part of the part of the historical problem has been the delivery mechanism. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's it's tough when you're running a very dynamic manufacturing environment. Yeah, you know, you know, you got to get the training for your folks. But if that training is only available, you know, from eight to two thirty Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, for an associate's degree or whatever. Right. So the real innovation that it, that it, we're starting to see, uh, even at the community college level and other areas, is in how that training is being delivered. Okay. Um, it's more on, uh, there's more of an online component mm-hmm. where you can perhaps get some of the, uh, the background out of the way, you know, learn the theory yeah. on, on your time at your pace, kind right. of a competency based model, and then, uh, provide uh, a lab opportunity. That's, that's much more flexible oh, okay. where you can get the hands-on experience with the guidance of, you know, somebody that's skilled in that area. Why should somebody be in a seat to be, to get to get theory, you yeah. know, to get that downloaded to them? So I think they call that the flipped classroom. Mm-hmm. Do the do the book work at home, yep. answer the quiz, whatever. When you're when you're on campus in the lab, you're doing and you're asking questions and and that type of thing. So okay, that's really you know a big part of it, as well as man working your way back down that pipeline. Get engaged in the te- in the K through twelve. Yeah, you know, segment of the community, right. um, create events that are exciting, yeah. uh, draw them in, bring the parents, yeah. you know what right, I mean? Right. Interact with other students, you know, not just guys that look like me, you know, so it's, you know, so embrace that whole STEM, right? Oh, you have to, yeah. it, it's, it's, especially now because what's happening in manufacturing is we've, we've kind of created a donut, you know, we've got the, we've got the old folks, Yep. You know, with tremendous domain expertise that are that are graying out. Right. Um, you know, there's kind of a gap in the middle because there was a period of time where it just wasn't cool to go into manufacturing, so nobody did. Yeah. Or or only a handful did. Right. And then we're we're starting to build this this bottom section, you know, young folks and trying to move them up as quickly as possible. Right. And hopefully technology can help us solve some of that gap in the middle. Yeah. Um yeah. but um there's there's a push. There's good jobs coming and they're the jobs that are, are there now and that are going to be there 20 years from now are going to look a lot different. Yeah. You're, you're not going to see as much operator on the line mm-hmm. uh, type thing. It's, uh, it's, it's using your head more than your hands. And I think the manufacturers out there need to embrace, you know, perception, like you said, perception and social media. One thing that we had a guest come on and he was talking about when he uh, was at his school, there was a manufacturer that actually came to campus to recruit and they did it by dropping a helicopter on the football field and they rolled out a lot of their cool products and then they had you know some cool videos and things like that to really just make the experience you know more understandable for that generation and it it, it hooked him i mean he he was hook line and sinker oh yeah yeah there's there's you're absolutely right you got to think outside the box yeah you know and if the first thing you do is well we're going to start you with an apprenticeship and, right. you know, and we're, we're going to give you a block of steel and a file. Right. And then the second year, you know, you've, you've got to make it more interesting than that. Some of yeah. the some of the training methodology is is prehistoric. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially given the tools that are available today. Kids learn differently today uh, than, than they did 30 years ago. No doubt. Know? So it's man, keep up. No doubt. Absolutely, man. With that, uh, sounds like it's great work you're doing there. We hats off to you. And we, we can even link if the, if you have any links that people want to check it out, we'll link that in the show notes for, uh, for that Academy. Sure. Nope. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> Very cool, man. So when you, when you think back across your career and, and people I'm sure have influenced you and you're influencing so many people, does anybody jump out as a mentor or have really helped you along the way? You know, it's, uh, different, different folks have appeared at different points along the way. I've been very blessed in that regard because there's there's plenty of folks out there that are way smarter than me uh, that, that, you know, haven't had access to some of the opportunities th- right. that I have. So I attribute that 100 percent to, uh, you know, the the mentors or there was somebody along the way that saw saw something I didn't and said, hey, I, wa- I want to give you a shot. OK. And and I recognized it at that time and didn't want to let them down. Yeah. you know, was, was kind of part of it. So I'm, I'm blessed that my very first, uh, employer, the guy I met around the keg of beer. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, I'm still best of friends with that guy. Okay. He, he lives, he lives 10 minutes from my house. We get together on a, on a pretty regular basis. And, 
have just uh, stayed the stayed the best of friends uh, over the years. In fact, to this day, uh, every time I either got a new job or got a promotion, yeah, he was the first guy I gave my new business card to. That's really cool. So I managed to do that all the way through my uh, my career. So. Uh, really proud of that. He was he was always and continues to be number one cheerleader, and so thrilled about that. Man, that is all. So, you, do you guys still uh, gather around a keg, or have those days passed? Uh, we move. We've moved on to bourbon. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that and, and he's uh, he's another craft beer knucklehead like our our friend Chris Lukey. So okay. Okay. I never know what to buy him. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> yeah, those guys are tricky. They really are. Oh, you know? Yeah, bourbon, bourbon's easier. <laughs> yeah, much easier, much easier. I'll just you know, fix me an old fashioned. We'll be good to go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray, how about you know when you're out there and you're you're doing the work you do and you do such such meaningful work, you know wh when do you find yourself getting the most fulfillment? It's rolling up my sleeves and getting in there with the group. Okay, and 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 seeing what's up because I always tell clients when we're gonna we're gonna do a project. The, whatever's going on, the magic is happening out on the shop floor, right. you know, good or bad. That's where it is. So I always tell them, I'm going to spend way more time out there than I am in your conference room. Yeah. Um, and up to it, including, you know, you've, you've, you've got to get out there and meet not only the, the formal leaders, but the informal leaders. There's sure. always somebody in a plant that people will look to and go, should I do this? Is this guy full of crap? Or, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta get to know them. So I, I really enjoy getting on the shop floor meeting with the folks, get the, yeah. really get the, the unbiased, the unvarnished truth about what's going on. And right. when they recognize they've got an advocate and you start pushing to do some stuff different, they're with you and it's moving forward. You know, nothing feels better than being able to point to, you know, to the improvements that were made yeah. and then point to the crew that was there and say, look what you guys did. Yeah. You know, no th doubt. this was it. So uh, that to me is the buzz that, is, is helping awesome. them move the needle. Now, have you seen with COVID, or obviously access to plants and things like that has been impacted. Are you still able to get in and, and see and make those rounds or is it moved to a more virtual environment? Just curious how that's working for you. You know, some of the stuff that's moved to virtual probably should have moved to virtual a long time ago. Okay. It, it was just cheap and easy to jump on a plane, get in the car or whatever. So, right. you know, some of that, that initial discovery or whatever, there's a lot you can do online. Um, in some initial interviews, you know, and those types of things. To right. answer your question, uh, yes, I, I do still get access uh, that, that you have to jump through some more hoops yeah. these days, yeah. uh, you know, make sure you've had, yeah. you know, uh, recent tests, mm -hmm. you know, COVID tests, you know, that type of stuff. And you take lots of precautions and all that, but um, it's, you, you get it done. Yep. It's, it's what That's manufacturers right. do. You just figure it out. That's <laughs> right. Know? That's right. It's, it's impacted us too. So far as servicing and helping manufacturers, yeah. everybody has different requirements from a PPE standpoint or testing right. and things like that, but you still got to get out there at some point and, and like you said, get on the floor to understand what's happening to help them. Yep. And it, I, you know, man, I'm sympathetic because, you know, nobody went into COVID, uh, you know, purposefully building an assembly line with everybody six feet apart. Right. You know, so, <laughs> you know, the scramble to reconfigure and everything else and keep them safe. Totally get it. That's it, totally man. get it. Well, when you look back across your career, anything stand out as a highlight or something just like, well, you could look back and be like, man, that I, I was a part of that. And that was really cool. You know, a couple, uh, again, I've been, I've been fortunate. Uh, well, I've, I guess part of it is if you're at it long enough, yeah. uh, you know, enough stuff comes to, comes to pass. Um, being able to, uh, to do international startups, I'm, I mean, you know, from, from the dirt, uh, you know, all the way up in another country with a different workforce and a, and a different market, right. you know, doing those types of things, uh, uh, has been hugely rewarding. Um, you know, uh, uh, one company I was with, we had, we had opened a factory in, in Shanghai, China in 2000. Uh, and when I left, uh, that business in 2017, there were there were people still there that that were there when we started, That's so to see that kind of progression and longevity, yeah. uh, and development uh, was was awesome. Being given the opportunity to to do some really innovative things, uh, you know, create uh, a, a, a factory focused maker space for engineers to come in and play okay. uh, was was kind of a a new a new adventure to be able to do that. I guess. Going back early on, uh, man, I remember making the conscious decision that one of the things I really wanted to do in my career 
was have some international experience okay. and and going to get that. Yeah. And, and if I look back on, on the one pivotal moment, it was, you know, the, the fact that I, I had the opportunity yeah. uh, to be able to go out and live and work and do stuff globally. And that's, that's eye opening. That's been awesome. That's so really, grateful. That's really cool, man. Good, some great highlights there, my friend. Oh man, not done yet. <laughs> no, not done yet. That's right. And then today, right. being here. <laughs> oh, you're too kind. <laughs> well, how about you know we these hero conversations? We don't we don't like to just talk just careers. We like to get to know the person. So if it's sure. okay, we'll we'll talk a little about about you outside of work, man. So how All about right. how about any hobbies? What do you like doing for fun? You know, I'm I'm bad with. Uh, uh, I, I've been bad with disciplined hobbies uh, over time. My wife used to always say, you ought to get a hobby. So I, I started and stopped a lot of different stuff. Okay. What, <laughs> what restores me uh, the most, uh-huh. I guess, uh, is the, and, and it still takes effort to do it sometimes, is the, uh, you know, get outside, Yeah. you know, right. and, and do something. Uh, you know, uh, I'll complain at start, but I, I, I love working around our, our yard. We, my, my wife's designed and created a beautiful garden for our home. There you go. And uh, I grumble about it, but uh, I enjoy every minute of, of being out there and, and looking at it. Yeah. I, I like reading, uh, reading all kinds of different stuff. I'm a I'm a sucker for, for history, particularly like uh, engineering or manufacturing related history. Okay. I love reading about times when enormous challenges – were overcome yeah. uh, successfully when resources were a fraction of what they are today. Right. Uh, you know, if you look back to, you know, a, a terrible time, you know, World War II, mm-hmm. however, what that inspired the manufacturing community to be able to do, oh, basically yeah. zero to what we were doing. Right. Henry Ford and the automobile, um, the building of the Brooklyn Bridge, the building of the Tal- Palomar Telescope. I'm a geek for that stuff. I, I love reading about it because then it brings you to today when we can simulate everything, right. you know, digital twin, this, <laughs> you yeah, know, right. You know, everything else. It's like, tell me again, why we can't do this. <laughs> you know? Well, have about any favorite books since you, you, you brought up books and reading about history and engineering, anything that jumps out is like, man, you got to read this. There, there's been a couple of things uh, recently uh, okay. that, that I've read one um, that I, uh, I came across, uh, a book called Emotional Agility, okay. uh, Dr. Susan David, who uh, is just, she really gets to the heart of of how people's, how your decisions, if they don't really tie back to your core values, how right. that creates some internal conflict, oh. you know, with, within people. And, 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 you know, so there's just, it's, especially during times of great change, if you don't have a handle on kind of yourself and how you cope with uh, stress and recognizing, you know, your emotions and stuff. And this, right. this yeah. isn't a, uh, this isn't a stand around the fire, sing Kumbaya. This is, this is based on some good science and just some good practical stuff. Gotcha. She, she's awesome. Um, there's a great book out called creativity Inc. Ed Catmo. Okay. Uh, and it's a great study in, uh, in, in like how organizations, how cultures innovate. He was one of the founders, I believe it was Pixar. Oh. So it's kind of the story of that team and how they created some of the things that they did. Uh, oh, and, and that, that is fantastic. Um, so I, I try, I draw from a lot of different, yeah. uh, you know, different areas, you know, about things and, um, connections just sort of happen and you look yeah. at, well, what if we apply this over here and did these things? So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's some of it. A lot, these days, there's so much content you can get. If I want new stuff, you know, of course, you can always do Google Alerts. Right. But one of the tips for manufacturing leaders, you know, out there, is it's podcasts, mm-hmm. such as, you know, Ask Why. Uh, it's, uh, I look at, uh, there's a ton of research that gets published on a regular basis from the likes of McKinsey, uh, Deloitte, PwC. Yep. You can sign up. This doesn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. You can sign up for alerts about stuff that's going on in the industry based on what you're interested in. Am I interested in additive? Am I interested in steel? Am I interested Mm -hmm. in international? You know, what, what is it? And, and they kind of curate these lists of, of stuff that come your way and, man, that's a way you can, you can catch up on stuff real quick. Man, it is. It really is. And we'll link all the, uh, the, the books that you refer to in our show notes for our listeners too. So they can check that out. So how about your, you, you mentioned your wife keeps you busy outside. What can you tell us about your family? You know, it's, it's my wife and I, we've been, uh, we've been married for 35 years now. Okay. Uh, and so she's obviously a woman of immense patience. 
<laughs> so, but uh, we uh, we had met in college and uh, got married shortly thereafter. She's from Penang, Malaysia. Uh, oh. So and my uh, my interest in in international thing all of a sudden became became my family and and my experience uh, internationally. Uh, and I'll share any time I get is, you know, the first time <clears throat> I met her family, father included, was when we were being married in Malaysia. And uh, what's what struck me was that uh, that was the first time in my life I had traveled so far uh, to a place that was so different yeah. and was made to feel so welcome. Oh, and and that's that's a theme that has recurred many times in my international travels. So wow. uh, I think a lot of times there are people that will be reluctant about doing business internationally or whatever, yeah. just because they haven't experienced it, right. you know, right. is, is the thing. So I am, I am <clears throat> so grateful you know, to my wife and her family and yeah. that, that reinforcement uh, has, uh, has, has served us all well and, and been very enriching. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us as well. My pleasure. How about, you know, from a personal standpoint, I know you have Manufacturing Out Loud and, and you, you're big into the Manufacturing Podcast. Mm -hmm. Any podcast you enjoy just for personal consumption that you like or, or refer to? There's, uh, the, the short answer is is yes. Okay. Um, there was there was a, a cool one out, uh, who's got it? Malcolm Gladwell uh -huh. uh, does does some cool stuff out there. He's uh, He's written some really interesting, uh, interesting books uh, over the years that could kind of cause people to really think. Yeah. So Mountain Gladwell's got a good one. There's another one out there called uh, the Happiness Lab. Um, okay. It's uh, Dr. Lori Santos is uh, is hosting, and that's a, a great series based on uh, her work uh, that she does as a professor, I think at Yale, um, where she does things. Uh, armchair experts got some cool stuff from from time to time uh i listen to your podcast uh there's uh my my friend jim carr and uh, uh jason zenger with uh, uh making chips on the manufacturing side they do some cool stuff chris lukey's yeah uh, the stuff that he's doing you know out there so yeah it's uh, it's some of the usual suspects i i get enjoyment out of manufacturing stuff, so I don't right. consider that work. There you, you go. Know I mean, that, you that's go. why it, it kind of blends. It all blends. There you the go. Well, cool, man. Well, we all I've uh, started doing a lightning round, Ray. And, all right. And, and Chris had a lot of fun. We did it, and, and we're, we're doing it with, with everybody. To sort of, I'm somewhat new to this, but uh, all right. it can be short answers. This can be long answers, but we'll just go as long as we as we, we feel good. How about that? Got it. Let her, <laughs> let her rip. All right, so man, we'll start. We'll start simple with uh, maybe your favorite food, pizza. Oh, okay. How about uh, adult beverage? Wow, uh, first one that popped into mind is bourbon. Okay, <laughs> any any particular type of bourbon? Free. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs> All right, we will get along very well, Ray. There you go. How about uh, uh, sports teams? Oh man, I live in Chicago, so anywhere not here. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, music? Oh wow, I, I like all kinds of stuff. Um, you know what? Everything from uh, from from classical to some hip hop. Oh, you know, I like so. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a very wide uh, wide taste in music across the board. Okay, okay. <laughs> how about um, favorite movie? <laughs> the one I can recite is Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not wrong with that. Any, any, uh, we'll stick with that same thing. TV show. I mean, people still watch TV, I guess. But yes, TV. Yeah. Show. Oh man. Uh, current or? Uh... It could be any. All time. Frasier. That's a good one. Yeah. I always go back to one of those Christmas ones, those Christmas, the Christmas Frasier. It was one of them, but it was, it cr cracks me up every time. But anyway. Eddie the dog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or when Niles uh, cut himself and he kept fainting, you know, <laughs> I just yeah. can't get over that one. That was just so good. Yeah. How about the uh, best place you've ever traveled to? Uh, the last one. Okay. <laughs> the next one. The next the one. Next one. The next one. <laughs> How about a uh, destination you haven't been to yet? Oh, destination I haven't been to yet. I haven't been to Italy. 
Haven't been to Italy? Okay. Uh-uh. Cool. I like to go. Any, uh, how about pets? Dogs, oh, cats? Oh, man. We've got a, uh, we've got a Keyshong named uh, Juniper, because I'm also a gin fan. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> so she is uh, 35 pounds of pure knucklehead. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And that, our last question, you're taking your wife out on a date, and it, you're trying to, to really win some points for that night. Where, where are you guys going? What are you doing? Oh man, you know what we like best? It's probably somewhere that's got some uh, some live music happening somewhere. Okay. We're uh, we're sit we're sitting at the bar because we're bar and appetizer people. Okay. So so we do, and and uh, and the bartenders are are fun and entertaining, and we're just having a good time. We met some we we meet some interesting folks there, and if uh, if the music's right, we get up and cut a rug. I hear <laughs> so. you, man. All right, all right. Well, look. Great job at the lightning round. That was a lot of fun. We, Appreciate it. Likewise. Yeah, we love to get, I think our listeners just like just get to know people a little bit deeper, man. So that's, that's fun. Yeah. So No, that, that was fun. Appreciate that. We uh, we always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the Why, Ray, and we're talking about the passion, you know, what drives us as, as individuals. So if somebody were to ask Ray, man, what is, what is your why? What will be your answer? That's always a tough one. Um, my why uh, for, for what I'm doing is, I, I have a passion for, for learning, mm-hmm. uh, applying, and then sharing it cool. is, is, is the thing. So my, my why is to find opportunities where I can either learn new things, apply those things, and in every possible instance, uh, share that uh, and encourage folks, as many folks along the way as I can to do the same. Man, that is you know, awesome. Pay it forward. I've uh, I have been and continue to be blessed uh, because others have have given me a shot, and and I owe that to the next group. Man, that's great. That that's uh, that that's tweetable right there, Ray. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> Hook me up, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, for all our listeners, all the references that Ray mentioned, we're going to, we'll put that in the show notes from his podcast that he's, that he co-hosts to his company, to the books and podcasts that he, that he listens to. So you can check all that out. Uh, please connect with Ray. I know he's very active on LinkedIn. Uh, I, when I reached out, it was an immediate response. I'm sure you're, you're, you're quick to the draw on that, aren't you? <laughs> well, Hey, if you're interested in me, I got news for you. I'm interested in you. There so you go. Hey, Ray, this has been just wonderful. We're blessed to have you as a guest, as, as one you. of our heroes uh, through this conversation. So just thank you for taking your time. My pleasure. My pleasure. All the best. All right. You have Thanks, a great Chris. day. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.